Hello and welcome to IGPP Expert Talks. I'm Hino Rasogni, Editorial Consultant with IGPP, Institute for Governance, Policies and Politics, New Delhi. As Congress takes the reins of the government in Telangana, replacing almost a decade-long rule of Bhartiya Rashtri Samiti in the state, headed by K. Chandrasekhar Rao, let us delve into the various reasons that led to the fall of the regional setra with Dr. Ajay Gudavarti. Dr. Ajay Gudavarti is a political theorist, analyst and columnist. He is also an associate professor at the Center for Political Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Dr. Ajay has authored several books and the latest, Politics, Ethics and Emotions in New India was published in February 2023. So, BRS is a party that played a key role in the formation of the Telangana state. But nine years since the state was formed, it has been ousted from power. What went wrong for BRS? Well, this goes back, you know, the demand for separate Telangana is a very long demand from 1960s, 70s. But uh, in 2004, it got revived and it was a 10 year old movement till its formation in 2014, June 2014. So you can imagine when India was undergoing a, a new resurgent cultural nationalist consensus after 2000 riots in Gujarat, Telangana was busy demanding for the social development demands. So formation of Telangana was around questions of sustained agrarian crisis, growing unemployment, there was a huge amount of out migration. The Mahubnagar district in Telangana, where I come from, has the highest out migration uh, in the country. Uh, so there were all these reasons of underdevelopment which were at the source of uh, formation of Telangana which got articulated in terms of the regional identity. But Telangana was never an exclusive regional identity question. It was more on the question of social development. The title, the slogan itself was Samajika Telangana. And BRS, then TRS played a key role and under Mr. KCR's leadership and that was the turning point when you know 2000. Uh, 14 with the election and uh, post that I think uh, for the first term till 2018-19 uh, the KCR got it right by a large number of welfare policies you know right to Bandhu for farmers, he had policies for women, he had policies for Muslims so on and so forth. So a large number of welfare policies that's why they gave him a second term in 2019. But Telangana is also a space of a uh, lot of social movements, independent Dalit movement, OBC politics, minority, left politics, gender. So this transactional welfareism, giving those basic welfare was good enough for a term. Hmm. Since the beginning of the second term, there was, we were already sensing a kind of a crisis. That there was a kind of an unrest, one to begin with youth. Mr. KCR ran into problem with the students and youth uh, in Usman University, which was the backbone of formation of Telangana. He started cutting funds for all universities. He did not appoint even vice chancellors, teachers uh, in universities. Posts were left. So he very deliberately undermined universities because he saw a possibility of resistance uh, from this angle. Then, right to Bandhu scheme that went to owners but not to the tenants. Unemployment was all time high. He did not recruit in government posts. He did not fill them up. Then there was rampant corruption ir irrigation project. So while welfareism, water resources worked for him in the first term, these later issues which were demanding to go beyond the basic welfare, you know, people were because there's higher level of aspirations and expectations in Telangana. There, I think uh, TRS uh, squarely failed to you know deliver, and his high handedness people you know because you know uh, where we have social movements you know Telangana is place where you have more than 85 percent of Dalit, Bhaujan and Muslim population and anti-feudal struggles are in the popular imagination of Telangana you know since the you know, Telangana armed struggle in 1940s that's part of the to struggle against feudal you know high-handedness caste hierarchies and uh, KCR somehow did not have the sense of history you know he started behaving in a very high-handed manner uh, insulting social activists, all this put together, then finally we could sense. So, so uh, you know, that was a deep anti TRS way, but not a pro Congress way. That's how I see the <laughs> recent election results.
Uh, so how is it that you know Congress was able to emerge as an alternate? Has it always had a strong regional presence there, or was it also an effect of the much hyped Bharat Jodo Yatra? No, neither of them actually. <laughs> no, neither. No, the Congress. Uh, there, there is in the popular memory the fact that Mrs. Sonia Gandhi went out of her way, you know, because getting Telangana was not an easy thing because the postal under a lobby was uh, very very powerful. You know. So it was Congress, and it was Mr. Sonia Gandhi's personal intervention, which was the feat of history, that uh, Telangana was delivered finally. So that. Memory is there in popular imagination that Congress somewhere played, you know, it, they dilly dally, they mismanaged it, they did not handle it properly, but yet they were instrumental in giving Telangana that people had that sense of history somewhere, though their uh, immediate obligation was to Mr. K. Sir because he is in the immediate range. So, this, this you know, dual memory was there. Once uh, uh, KCR started declining, that people started, you know, the growing discontent against his thing. People were looking for options. My own reading one year back was that BJP will fill that space because BJP was very robustly mobilizing under Mr. Banji, Sanjay's uh, leadership. Those tenants that I was talking about who were unhappy with the, you know, this uh, right to Bandhu scheme, they were all mostly intermediate caste and OBCs. They were shifting very fast to uh, BJP. Uh, given the nature of their funds and their money power, muscle power, media control. So I could sense that one year back it was BJP which was trying to occupy that space and Congress was nowhere in the picture. But uh, I don't know whether the BJP goofed up their strategy or some backdoor handling, one does not know, it's very very difficult to read these things and one can only second guess that uh, with the uh, removal of Mr. Bhante Sanjay, and bringing in Mr. Kishan Reddy, who as a president of uh, Telangana BJP, who has no mass connect, so on and so forth, uh, BJP suddenly started sliding down. That is when Mr. Raven Reddy's leadership became uh, pivotal for uh, Congress and uh, he started mobilizing established ground connect. Uh, all those started helping Congress. But still, I would say this is a pro anti TRS way, but not a pro Congress way. Therefore, even while Congress was growing, they were expecting 85, 90 and, and my own reading was that they wouldn't cross more than 70 because if it is a pro-Congress vote, then they would have surged forward. But people voted more out of anger against uh, KCR's leadership and BRS's uh, dysfunctional policy uh, structure rather than for the Congress. So it is a big test for Congress to actually consolidate uh, their uh, you know, social base in Telangana. In the earlier discussion that we had, you know, you also pointed out that Congress is making, you know, connection with the ground root organization and the joint action committee. Was that instrumental in bringing Congress to power? Definitely, see that in that sense, Telangana, uh, in fact, I, you know, in my recent article, I referred to this Telangana model of social development. And uh, I would make a pitch that this model should finally uh, replace the Gujarat model. Than that. This has the potential and if Congress and opposition parties are to have a chance in this country to grow and break this current majority and impasse, Telangana has very strong clues. Now, Telangana in that sense is, is there is an exceptionalism. You know, this is one state where you know you will find very surprisingly civil society, middle class, social activists have direct connect to the ground. Unlike you know other all other civil societies which only operate in a certain limited constrained domain, uh, Telangana civil society is very very different. Partly because of as I said its long history of social movements, political mobilizations. You know whether you go in media, you whether you go in academia, whether you support journalists, whether school teachers, whether it is lawyers. There is a strong presence of left of center thing. All of them have some lineage back to left struggles or Dalit struggles or independent Bahujan struggles or ecological struggles. So it's a very interesting place you know that all you will find in all domain walks of life you will find people inspired by social activists and these social activists in turn a journalist working in a newspaper in Hyderabad will have association with a district level organization which will then have roots in the connected to mass. So when Telangana this round this was around 50 organizations 
came together to form Telangana Joint Action Committee, which is a very unique experiment as a follow-up to what happened in Karnataka. Now, in Delhi, Karnataka was a similar experiment. Hundred social organizations in Karnataka came together, campaigned day and night. They did not say vote for Congress. They simply said, "Don't vote for BJP in Karnataka." Mm -hmm. Similar, you know, experiment happened here. You know, social activists who were constituted by academics, journalists. Full time social activists working on health, famine, you know, women's related issues, malnutrition, child labor, all these organizations which have great, more than their reach, they have great credibility. People trust them. These are the organizations which came together and began a campaign for six months to throw out BRS because also by default BRS is with uh, BJP. And also three days before, just imagine this. Three days before the election, the voting day, the prospective chief minister candidate of Congress, Mr. Ravind Reddy, spends two and a half hour on live television with three social activists: one president of Telangana Joint Action Committee, Mr. Kodan Ram, president of Telangana Jan Samiti, and Mr. Ramchandra Murthy, who is the editor, senior editor, journalist of uh, an independent newspaper. Three of them questioning him on face. What are your policies? Tell us your policy on water. Tell us your policy on land. Tell us your policy on urbanization. And three of them at the end of the this live conversation tell him on in his face. If you go back on any of these demands, we will be the first to sit on dharna and mobilize against. Which state will you find that? Why would a prospective chief minister candidate feel compelled? To come live on television to talk to three academics and journalists, you know how political leaders work in India. They, I mean, they think they are an elite among themselves. They are in a class among themselves. Even left-based leaders these days behave that way. You know, they think they are cut above the rest. But here is the Telangana situation where Ravind Reddy's correct assessment was that if I associate myself with these leaders, immediately it's not that the reach is great, but the credibility of some of them is so high on the ground that people begin to trust you. That trust, that positive impact definitely shifted. It's very difficult to quantify in terms of votes. How many? Uh, no, no. In terms of Karnataka, in my own conversation with Yogendra Yadav, he said 12 to 18 constituencies they could make a difference in the outcome of the results. One does not know. Somebody has to do this study in Telangana. But by and large, credibility that people began to trust. Here is a government that can be made responsive because. That was the reason why KCL was thrown out because of his high-handed uh, behavior. That I think impacted the last-minute calculation on the ground that these organizations went back to grassroots and the default message was that vote for Congress, we need a change. That uh, definitely made an impact. When th this model of social activists holding state to ransom, holding state accountable, I think is not there in any other state. In many other, except Karnataka and Bengal, perhaps are two that come very close in my mind. But not many states you have this model where social activists directly are linked, and they are always in the media. So they are also looking for alternate opinion, reading their columns in Telugu newspapers. So a large section of Telangana, in that sense, is well informed. So that is a model that opposition has to really draw upon. You know, if you know, they have any chance. To kind of question this majority and you know, impasse, then I think we have to have more and more social activists involved in alternative models of development. Like in this background, we see that an year back, you know, BJP might have been seemed like a strong alternate, but it was ultimately not able to make inroads. So, is that a you know rejection of the kind of polarization politics that BJP indulges in as a state? Also, how is like are the divides of you know is the communal divide in Telangana deep? No, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, if you want me to answer this frankly, I would say uh, Congress moves it up 2029 or 28. The next Telangana election, BJP can form the government. BJP has a reasonable presence uh, in terms of. Uh, there is an undertone of uh, polarization. Caste Hindu elites uh, have this memory of Razakas, Nizam rule, 
no Hindu Muslim clashes. You know that narrative exists in the popular imagination of Telangana. There is no doubt about that. But the general, because of this massive social agenda, or what happened, on the question of education, people's now focus is on these issues: on education, on employment, on health, on urbanization, on land, on water resources. So Telangana, in that sense, was a democratic demand. You know that this dem social democratic imagination has occupied people's. Uh, if these aspirations don't get fulfilled. You know uh, the way both primary and higher education was neglected in this case here. What that does is that it locks up certain social groups, especially the intelligence. So there's a great propensity, for instance, OBC is moving towards uh, BJP and BJP's agenda of giving that aggressive posture. You know that you know you can wear tilaks, walk, you know that muscular presence. All this frustration will get vented through those that kind of symbolism. So I wouldn't rule out BJP. BJP has still a great chance of growing if they can combine their polarization agenda with social development. The problem with BJP is that they're not very pro on social development. For instance, primary education is a big issue in the land. Dalit versions want education, not only education; they want education in English. Now, will BJP and RSS be proactive on such an agenda? Very unlikely. I mean, they don't. That's not part of their imagination. So the, the, their problem is they are not able to combine the agenda of social development aspirations with their polarized. You know, for instance, Yogi came twice in previous election, in this election, and his agenda was I will change Hyderabad's name from Hyderabad to Bhagyanagar. I will remove Nizamabad's name. These people are laughing at this agenda because people just simply can't connect. What is this changing of names? What does it bring? So where you have an imagination of social development, of a better life, then these look very trivial. In North India, I think there has been a death of civic imagination. Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar. People have simply stopped believing things can change. You can have better health facilities. You can have better educational facilities. In th that kind of a landlocked imagination, where your imagination is locked, in a, not in some kind of a time warp, then this gives this is this kind of an agenda hyper talk. You know, I will change this mogul scheme. We have to do this. You no know, catches your imagination. But once people have a concrete imagination of their life conditions, you don't know how exactly to change them. Then this empty talk of you know is simply not working. And BJP is not able to move beyond that. You know, both Prime Minister Yogi have come in number of campaigns. They are going back. Razakars were there. This that. So that I uh, don't think unless they are able to combine that narrative with a promise of social development. Why that is not part of BJP's you know politics is something that we can question. Also, we in the results that we saw, where wherever there was a direct contest between Congress and BJP, Congress lost. But uh, Congress gained at the state at the cost of another regional party, that is BRS. So, what does Congress's victory in Telangana mean for other regional parties in the area? And what will be the ramifications of Congress's victory for the India Alliance? In a uh, for one, and for the you know politics of opposition in the context of 2024 elections. The so one in terms of BJP's victory, if you see, they won in tribal areas, hmm. near Zamabad, Nadilabad, where uh, tribal present because BJP and RSS have been mobilizing uh, tribal subgroups against the dominant Lambada tribe, so they got an entry there. So that's what that partly explains why. BJP one, it's not Congress versus BJP, but the social base they created a new social base among tribals, uh, and that's why they won. That's the very question in terms of Congress BJP. What is it the uh, impact on regional parties? It's a difficult question to answer because B TRS itself no longer remained a regional party. It became BRS. It announced a national ambition. You know, TRS. So uh, uh, in a one sense, he was emulating uh, Mr. Modi. Modi from regional to national, from national he moved to global. You know, from global he was going planetary to so, you know, Chandrayaan. So, so he, Modi was moving very fast. So Mr. KCR thought he will also emulate that model. So he started making from regional to national. But neither he had the strategy nor that stature to really capture that imagination. So part of his calculation looked like that since people are dissatisfied with him at a regional level, if he pro projects a national face. No, uh, Prime Minister from Telangana, that will attract. But as I said, 
when you have a robust social agenda, people will not easily be attracted to this kind of you know big talk. Uh, so that did not work, and in fact, it was it proved to be counterproductive. That the loss of regional connect. That then you have only national parties, Congress, BJP, PRS. All three are national uh, parties. They are not. There is no local party. So that way, Mr. K C R also lost. So Mr. K C R, that is a problem that he never had that sense of history. The movement which he ostensibly claims to be leader, that is a movement he had complete contempt towards. So that regional movement that he, you know, he says is at one level leader. From day one he expressed contempt. All those leaders were part of the formation of regional. He started sidelining them. Some of them he got arrested. Some of them he forced uh, uh, UAPA. Some of their houses were attacked. So all this he did. You know that. So that gradually that he lost that regional connect. You know this kind of a uh, mismanagement. So I don't think there is any immediate impact on regional connect. For your final part of your question in terms of what can Congress learn from this, I think Congress has to learn what I just explained in the previous question. That Congress does not have the organizational capacity, does not have the required funds. So what Congress can bank on is a promise of greater social development, and that promise of that social development and welfareism has to be has to go much beyond what BJP has promised. BJP is also a welfare party today. If there is one party which is very welfare, is that is BJP. Now, the, every section they have, from farmers to every section, they also have welfare policies. BJP has a better efficiency, better administrative mechanism to implement those policies. You know, so that's that's partly what explains their return in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and uh, Chhattisgarh. That uh, their welfare track record is also as good or as bad as Congress. So that's why people you know what is there to choose between Congress and BJP. Why should they return back to Congress? So there is no great incentive for people to go back if BJP does marginally well, along with its nationalist agenda, its global power, India's new recognition on the global setting. Then we have reached the moon. That becomes the add-on, you know, value because the basic level playing is the same between all regional parties, Congress and BJP. There is nothing to choose. That's what we call as a neoliberal consensus in terms of economic policy. There is absolutely nothing to choose between from left to Congress to BJP. Sure. They have same policies, you know, doles, five hundred rupees monthly, one thousand free travel, free ration. These are the policies that cut across all political parties from left to right. So the, on economic policy front, there is absolutely nothing for people to choose. So the lesson they have to learn from Telangana is that it is this basic aspiration. You know, while formation of Telangana, one of the basic demand was KG to PG free education. Nowhere in the country you have this imagination. Have common neighborhood schooling system. Education should be completely a public good. There should be no commercialization of education. Of course, KCA went back on that demand, and he further commercialized. He further closed down government schools. That again is responsible for his decline. So this social demand. No, uh, Rahul Gandhi did not. Telangana, they did not. Congress did not come and say KJ to PJ. They went to Chhattisgarh and said KJ to PJ. PJ. If they are serious on some of these demands, bring health, education, and basic income. These three demands, if they go, uh, that's what Congress can learn. That it is not merely culture, you no know, hyper nationalism. The way Mr. Kamal Nath was beating. Baba Bageshwar, you know, just emulating whatever BJP does. Instead of that, you have to bring a robust social agenda where people can see better lives. That for that, you have to go beyond this transactional welfareism to what I refer to as structural welfare. Change, tell everyone that you will have a good opportunity for quality primary education. That will change the mood uh, in the nation. In the aftermath of the election results, people are also talking about a north-south divide. Do you agree with such narratives that there does exist a north-south divide, and are there any positives to it? Well, yes and no. There are differences uh, in terms of imagination that in uh, south, north and south, but uh, not the way it is being projected um, by you know our psychologists, friends, and uh, media. That uh, there is some kind of a you know, demographic kind of a divide, uh, you know, because if you see the results, even in all the three states that Congress lost, their vote share did not decline, which means that people are still thinking. You know, this thing that you know people are unthinking in North. I don't buy that argument. People are thinking 
but there is a depth of a civic imagination to sustain misgovernance a long history that north has had uh, i think that that I, that is where it is different from the south south still has social development continues to be the central plan whether it's tamil nadu whether it's karnataka whether it is andhra whether it is kerala if you go to kerala i was there a couple of months back the entire debate is around education knowledge economy what is ai technology how does colleges how do you introduce what are the new courses introduced how do you globally link them this is the debate that's happening in kerala though there are christians muslims and uh, no hindus so party like bjp if you go and promise all this people don't get attracted because when you have a promise for a better life through social development then the other agenda does not become immediately very attractive unless you pump it down media and you know shove it down people's throat so that difference i think is a key difference that entire uh, social issues you know uh, become only political in the north so like dalit bahujan mobilization you had bsp there's a political expression of a social context but in south you have an independent dalit movement so electorally bsp does not succeed in south but dalit bahujan issues are in the foreground electorally bsp succeeds in the north but social agenda is dropped out no one bsp says i will give primary free quality education to dalit children it only this political machination more representation speaker kon banega kitna ministers hai so the north is caught in this hyper political dialogue and social demands have just fallen on the wayside so this i would say is where the north south divide exists but in terms of electoral thing i don't it's an exaggerated to think that the congress now is only in south because you see the vote share number of votes congress is very close to bjp so electorally congress has not fallen off but in terms of social imagination yes there's a big divide between north and south what advice would you give to congress and now the new chief minister ravan threedi as he takes up the leadership role well you know ravan threedi is a sensible intelligent chief minister as we have seen but uh, he is ready so that is congress has had a long leadership of ready leadership there is a the popular imagination of let ready landlordism in the telangana and you know uh, baladier gadda who is a famous uh, revolutionary singer who is a legendary singer who passed away recently he said that under ksr the old feudal uh, rule shifted from gadi to farmers gadi is where the forts of the landlords so those he says the same landlords modernized themselves and living in farmers that's where guys ksr used to live in farmers so that landlord is high handed uh, treatment of people is not acceptable to people and so there is a great uh, you no know, imagination of self respect and dignity questions are at the heart of uh, telangana social imagination and so revanth reddy should keep this in mind first second he cannot take social activists for granted in telangana it is not like north and rest of the places where you can lock them up and there will be no public response you know on uh, professor hargopal there was a uap case two days there were massive protest movements entire media was covering it to the extent where ksr himself had to come and withdraw this false uh, case uh, on him so this is the reality of telangana this is one side of telangana's reality where people a large sections are better informed in terms of so you cannot take social you know activists for granted and go for high handed exceptional you know loss extraordinary loss and third therefore i think his focus should be on continuously expanding social development and if it does it well people of telangana will give uh, a long haul to congress because there is a vacuum today brs is on decline ksr health is not doing very well ktr has no ground raise bjp yet is yet to grow so there is a vacuum which can congress can handsomely occupy for a very long time to come provided the focus on social development not going back to uapa extraordinary laws controlling social activists arresting them they go back to that model the danger is people will move to bjp and that will be a massive shift uh, in telangana's uh, history thank you so much for joining us today sir thank you it was a pleasure